Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'm gonna be taking you over all of my 3D printing hardware. I made a video a while ago about my software and programs I'm using, and I even name dropped this video in it, but then I realized I never made it, and it's been a question I've been getting a lot. What are you using? What upgrades do you have? What film are you using? So I'm, in this video, I'm gonna go over all that, what the printers and hardware I use, and then in another video, I'm gonna go over my actual um, independent monitoring system, and my fire suppression system. This way I can leave my printers going um, whenever I leave the house and I don't have to worry about them because that peace of mind is kind of nice. And I can also monitor and control my printers uh, remotely from anywhere in the world. And no, I'm not using Octoprint or any Raspberry Pi programming. All this stuff can be bought on Amazon for less than I think $80 for everything. And once you see what I got, you'll say, wow, that's a lot. But that's another video. So let's start looking at the hardware and what I'm actually printing with. So these are my two printers. Um, there are two Creality CR10Ss and they're basically clones of each other. Uh, minus that this one has Z braces and this one doesn't and I'll explain that later. I got this one for about 450 brand new uh, at the time. I think you can get them a little bit cheaper now. There's up, there's newer versions, the V2s, the Pros that are probably worth the money, but this one works if you're just looking for a workhorse to print tall parts as opposed to something like a smaller Ender 3, which is good for quality and you know detailed little figurines. I got this one for about 200 used. Uh, the guy was having problems with it and just sold it because he couldn't figure it out. Turns out it was built wrong from the factory. There were bearings that were installed wrong. Belts were wrong. Bearings were in the wrong spot. He was pretty much doomed from the get-go and he had no idea. He just didn't understand the hobby enough and he didn't understand the machine enough, which can, you know, it happens. Um, if I hadn't learned so much on this one, I would have never been able to rebuild this one and get it printing beautifully. And now they both print exactly the same with the occasional little uh, error glitch. That's why that one's wearing a dunce cap right now because it's giving me slight issues. Anyway. Out of the box, this thing's gonna work beautifully. The only problem I had immediately was I couldn't get um, my bed to stick. I had adhesion problems with this factory glass bed, and a lot of people do. The glass can actually warp and bow um, really easily. So there's tons of information on what to do with this. You can get better glass beds, you can get mirror beds, you can get solid beds, you can get fiberglass beds. I went with this option, and I'm, I will never look back, it's a magnetic flexible bed. So there's a magnetic pad right here and then a little aluminum pad. And what it does is it allows, it solved all my adhesion problems right off the bat, which was amazing. All my prints stick. I wash it maybe once a week um, and then I'll pop it off, flex it in half, pop the print off, put it back on, good to go. And since it already has that kind of, you know, smooth, um, flexible tendency, it won't really warp by itself. It sticks back to the heat bed and it's good. Um, the clips are just for security because I just want to make sure it stays exactly where it is. If I'm doing something like a large print, obviously it can wobble and it might shift it. So the clips just help. That's the only problem you might run into right off the bat. Everything else after is option is optional. Uh, a lot of people get throw upgrades at you and what they'll want to do is tell you, Hey, upgrade this, upgrade that, uh, buy this, buy that. And you know, you just bought a $400 printer and you just ordered a hundred dollars worth of upgrades. And it's like, what are you doing? Don't upgrade something until you understand it. And it's, I, I hate when people push upgrades. Um, if you don't know why you're upgrading it, don't upgrade it. How can you know that you you should upgrade your metal extruder if you don't even know what the normal extruder is? What's your Bowden tube? What's the difference between your Bowden tube and direct drive? Why would you want stepper dampeners or why would you want a silent motherboard? So understand your machine before you start upgrading it and it'll just, it, it helps you learn better. So when you have a problem, you don't know if it was that part you installed wrong. Cause if you install this Bowden tube wrong, you'd have a nozzle blowout. And was it, was it the Bowden tube? Was it your nozzle? Was it your hot end? Are you under over extruding? You just don't know what happened. So please just understand your machines and then start upgrading them. As you use it though, I did notice that certain things will start to wear and break. And that's when you do your research. So if you look on this Ender 3 right here, you'll see that this is plastic, a black plastic arm that you know flexes, and it has spring tension on it at all times. And plastic and constant spring tension, over time, what's gonna happen is right about here, there's gonna be a crack. I threw away mine on this one that did crack. This one's from the yellow one. I upgraded it right off the bat, actually, because I understood why I should upgrade it. And what you can do is you swap this all out it's for an all metal one. And now this spring tension is pushing on metal, which is pushing on this little bearing, which is pushing on this gear. And that is, as this gear turns, it feeds the nozzle through this Bowden tube. So that was one problem fixed. This, this never um, slips or under extrudes or this thing has just been perfect and this will last the life of the printer. However, now, since this is always working, this tube right here, this nice blue tube, used to be this nice white tube and it's still 
this white tube on this Ender 3, and it'll start to wear down. It's not strong enough to handle so much filament for a long time. And what it can do is the inside can start to wear down, the tips can get too hot and start to pop off. If I was to pull this on this hard enough right now, this would actually probably start to come off and get loose. And then uh, I might ha potentially have a nozzle blowout in here and filament can leak and that's just a bad day. This is a Bowden Capricorn tube and it is a, uh, I'm, I think I'm saying this wrong, PTFE tubing. It's just a stronger plastic that doesn't wear down and once you lock it in there, it's pretty much there forever. And if you order the kit on Amazon, I think it's like 10 bucks, it gives you enough to do two printers and a little bit extra to do whatever you want with. And there's actually stuff you can do with this. Um, so I was able to upgrade both printers right off the bat with this tube and they've been fine ever since and never had any issues. Those are probably the only two upgrades I would actually recommend, but only if you understand them. Why are you doing that? Don't just take my word for it, research and you know learn the parts in the machine. Other things I did to uh, just for my own purposes, I moved the filament holder up here because I wanted to save some space. And a lot of people immediately had, there's tons of information, blah, 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 that having your filament holder up here is going to then make your upper gantry wobble back and forth. So, you, hey, make sure you get Z braces to lock everything together. So I did that. But I was able, what's cool about having the two printers is I'm able to test upgrades, what works, what doesn't. And you'll notice this one doesn't have Z braces because I never noticed a single difference. And I've printed, as you can see, I've printed some pretty tall stuff um, for the suit and I never noticed a single difference in print quality, no matter what I did. Anything that caused um, weird issues was unrelated to the fact that I had a tall print and it was wobbling. So take that with a grain of salt. Um, I'm sure if I was printing at a faster speed, it might matter, but I'm printing at 50 and 60 millimeters per second, which really isn't that fast at all. The other thing I did is I bought a really cheap wiring harness off of Amazon. I think it was 10, 10 or $20. And I was able to move the control box completely underneath the printer. Again, just to save some space. Very simple. Again, it's just for looks. You can leave your control box here. Um, you can do whatever you want with it. I just did this for me and I've been pretty happy with it. Uh, I, I like the whole setup and just how everything looks. Another thing, actually, I would, <laughs> this is what I would actually recommend doing. Inserting your SD card over and over again can actually wear down your SD card slot. And unfortunately, it's built into the main board on the box. So if that wears down and you can't read your SD card anymore, you have to replace that board. But what you can do is you can get a USB extender that converts an SD card into, or micro SD card into a full SD slot. And then now, as I'm using this SD card slot in and out, in and out, in and out, this is gonna wear down. And if this stops working one day, that's fine. I can put this in and out 20, 30,000 times, but I only put that one in once. So that can help extend the life of your printer, um, of your, your main board and your control box. And it seems to be working and it's a little bit easier just having access to this and not having to worry about damaging my board. I still need to buy one for this and I've just been lazy. I also printed up, up some feet just to kind of hold the box up. Um, I under extruded like uh, really bad. So I taped it all together. It works, I really don't care. Um, another thing I actually did was upgrade these little springs right here. And what they do is they hold your bed when you level it, they keep the bed le nice and level and flat as you adjust the knobs. This isn't required. I really didn't notice too much of a difference with it. And it's especially not gonna matter on these smaller printers because the bed's so small. On a 10S, on an S4, and an S5, a Max, I think the Max comes with it. Um, it'll help kind of keep the bed a lot better. And if there's weight, too much weight, you're printing something really big, these, these springs can get pushed down pretty easily. So if you start having a really big print, it can maybe offset and wobble you, where these ones are much stronger, so. I'm also running a six millimeter nozzle instead of the stock four millimeter nozzle. It just helps me increase my print speed and the size of my print a little bit better. I can push more plastic through quicker. Um, I could probably go up to an eight. If you start going up to like a one millimeter nozzle though, you're gonna need to start upgrading your hot ends and that's just a whole rabbit hole I don't wanna deal with. So I run a six, it's a good balance. Um, you lose a little bit of quality, but I gained it up in speed. And when you're printing bigger things like helmets, you can sand them down, that very minute detail isn't as crucial. If you're printing figurines though, you can even go You can go down to like a two millimeter nozzle or even a, um, a 0.2 millimeter nozzle or a 0.1 millimeter nozzle. Your prints are gonna take forever, but the quality is gonna be insane. Um, these CR-10Ss, these bigger printers aren't really meant for that high of detail. They can do it, but it's much more better suited for an Ender 3 Pro or you know a very much smaller printer. One complaint some people have about 3D printing is the sound and noise and how loud these are. I'll tell you right now, my both of my CR-10Ss, the loudest thing on them right now is this fan while it's printing because I got something called stepper dampener motors. And some people, again, there's conf conflicting information. 
don't put them on, don't get stepper dampeners. You're going to get ghosting. It's going to make your, it's going to make your print weird. It's going to make this wrong. It's going to make that wrong. Upgrade your main board, reprogram your main board, get, um, uh, TL smoothers, get, uh, there's a bunch of just so much information. I went with the cheap route. I think they were five bucks and you can actually see them right here. So you can see that this motor, there's a gap right there. And this is the stepper dampener. It's a polyurethane little mount that actually helps dampen the vibration of the motor whining back and forth. And you can see that it isn't on this ender right here. This is just bolted right to the metal frame. And when I have this ender running, it is 10 times louder than either of these printers. I used to be able to hear them um, all through the house. Now I can barely tell they're on if I'm not in the room and it's just a light hum. I've recorded plenty of videos with these running and no, you can't even hear them in the background. So that's one thing I did for sound. I also got these little foam pads, boosted up the feet a little bit, and then I also put little foam pads down here on the bottom of this uh, table, and you can't hear them at all. It's wonderful. I still need to do it to this. This Ender 3 is on loan from a, um, a class I teach. Unfortunately, with this uh, whole virus thing, I can't teach the classes in person, so I'm doing these online classes, and this thing has just been you know, here helping me out. So which one would I recommend if anybody was asking me to get started? If you're looking to go into cosplay and you're looking to go into like bigger prints and you want to print helmets and weapons and props and stuff or keyblades, you know, look into the Creality CR10 series. So you can get a 10S for cheap. You can get the, uh, the Pro or the V2. They're amazing. Um, you can get the CR10 S4, which is 400 by 400 by 400. Get the S5. It's 500 cubed. So... They're much bigger printers, they're reliable, everything's accessible, so if things start to break and go wrong, your belt's right here, your motors are right here, it's all very accessible, it's not these all-in-one printers that are hard to maintain. So I would, I would recommend these to the end of time right now. They're affordable, they're great, the community is great, the support is great. So the 10S for bigger stuff, and as you can see, I can print a whole helmet in just one shot, which is wonderful. And then you have an Ender 3. This is a much smaller entry level one. This isn't a pro, this is a normal. They're right now, while I'm filming this, there's a great sale on the uh, the Ender 3 Pro. I think it's like over $100 off on the website. But as you can see, this couldn't print a full helmet in one shot. It's a little bit too small. No matter which way I orient this, it's maxed out. It's gonna hit the top. So, for, But you still can print a helmet on this. All you would have to do is split it up into pieces. And I actually printed this exact face mask on this printer. Um, when it was when I first got it. So you can definitely cut it up. This is a beautiful entry level printer. It works great out of the box, maybe an hour to set it up and it just, it's fantastic. So if you're looking to just get started on whatever, you can look into an Ender 3. Uh, I think these are, yeah, like I said, 200 to 300 and they are absolute workhorses. They don't take up a lot of space at all. They're pretty light and yeah. So that's my hardware setup. That's everything I'm printing with currently. There'll be more videos, and if I ever upgrade these printers or get new ones, I'll make sure I uh, you know, swap them out and update this video. And then in the next video, I'm gonna also be talking about my uh, monitoring system and fire suppression system and all that. So thanks for watching, and you guys have a good day.